If you have discoloration under the armpit, it could be acanthosis nigricans, a sign of insulin resistance. That also happens on the back of the neck, it can happen on the face, but a lot of people develop hyperpigmentation under the arm secondary to irritation. Like maybe you have become irritated by your antiperspirants, your deodorants, or your razor blade. Maybe you're allergic to nickel. There's often nickel present in the razor blades, or maybe you are pressing too hard when you shave. Like you pop your armpit socket out, right, and press really hard, that can lead to a lot of irritation. Make sure you use a sharp blade and that you use a shave cream or shave gel there. Speaking of acanthosis nigricans, it's a skin manifestation of an underlying insulin resistance, uh, a marker that the cells in your skin are seeing a lot of insulin-like growth factor. And that can be a hallmark of metabolic dysfunction. That's definitely something that needs attention. But once that's controlled, will the acanthosis nigricans go away? It can improve. Tretinoin can improve the appearance of acanthosis nigricans. It's one of many of the uses of tretinoin. Just starting my morning skincare routine with a Novino Daily Moisturizing Facial Cleanse. What's the best temperature to wash your face, you may be wondering? Cool to look warm. You just don't wanna wash your face in super hot water. You can make your skin more prone to dryness. to a non-drippy damp face, <laughs> I'm gonna come in with three drops of coenzyme Q10. Now, Q10, I've talked about it's an antioxidant naturally present in the stratum corneum of your skin. It's also in the sebum that you make. Q10 and vitamin E antioxidants in your sebum. And those of you who have oily skin and are always lamenting your oily skin, uh, there is some evidence that y'all may show the signs of skin aging to a lesser extent. With age, sebum production declines as well as the levels of antioxidants in our skin. I use it around my eyes too. And you see that thin layer of serum is already dry and I'm good to go to come on over with my sunscreen. I'm gonna come on per use with the Hadalabo UV white gel. Coffee time, we've got a grin and bear it this morning. Yet another Raven's Brew coffee. I have just been all about that lately. Check out this cute thing that YouTube sent me, Dr. Dre's Greatest Hits. It's like a record album and they sent me a Fuji's record, the score, which I love this album, two bits. So I thought it was a really nice Christmas gift they sent. Um, and the cover is so cool. Here's the artist, Raul Urias. And you can put your record in there. And then on the back, they highlighted some of my videos and some of your comments from those videos. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Dr. Dre's greatest hits. I thought it was really neat. And I'm stoked to have this. It's actually turned out to be a pretty nice day today. We've had some moist weather as of late. We had one of those snaps where I guess Something to do with like when the weather is really cold, but then all of a sudden it swings to be warm. It's like some sort of humidity sink and all of a sudden everything just gets really wet. Not indoors, but outdoors, like the ground is literally so So I'm here in Costco and I always used to get these dried mushrooms, but it used to come in a big container. I know, it's this little one for $14.99. It doesn't sound like they increase the price too much. These are really good. Um, this is new, Pink Lady Apple wedges. Ooh, they look soft. I may have to get these. Ooh, the freeze dried durian is back. This stuff is good. But you only get three servings and it's $12.69, but it's really good. This is new, dried mangosteen. This is a company that I used to buy the beet chips from. It doesn't seem like you get much in here. $9.99, three servings. What, this is Costco, three servings? What am I supposed to do with that? Then they have dried pineapple. Check it out, sriracha seasoning. Cool, I heard there was like a shortage of sriracha earlier this year, you see we're pulverizing it into a powder. Check these out, Green Made Instacrate Collapsible 12 Gallon Crates. These seem really handy, like they show them here, you can use them in your grocery cart, store them in the back of your car, or use them for like 
storage in general. This would be handy in like a garage. These are new and they're really nice. These Max and Mia cardigans, they're super soft. They have this gray color, burgundy and black, $24.99. The Kirkland Signature sweatshirt is looking stylishly muted at $15.99. You can also get this eggplant color or blue. I went in there for dishwasher detergent pods and I came out with dishwasher detergent pods, which if you've ever been shopping in Costco, you know it's a victory to just go in there and exit with one, one item, one item, exactly what you went in there for. If you are trying to resist the urge to spend impulsively, but you need to go into a store, I have a tip for you that's gonna save you a ton of money. Don't get a shopping cart plain and simple don't get a shopping cart that way you won't be tempted to just pick stuff up you can only get what you can carry so if you're going in for one item do not sabotage yourself by getting a shopping cart oh man this intersection is always it's always like a russian roulette so i activated a trial membership of hulu solely because i wanted to watch the uh the elizabeth holmes docu-series with Amanda Seyfried. Oh my gosh, I got sucked in. I watched like 80% of the show. I have a few more episodes left. It was totally worth activating that membership for. I am captivated by that whole story because I feel it on a personal level. Just, I was, I remember very vividly, I was working in the lab and I was working alongside one of my lab mates doing I don't know, a Western blot, trying to get it to work. If you've ever worked in a lab, you know what I'm talking about. This was my postdoc. So if you're new here, I um, did a combined degree program, MD, PhD, and then when I was a Durham resident, I did like a mini postdoc of two years in a lab researching melanoma. And then, you know, also finished my Durham residency at the same time. Anyway, I remember vividly working in the lab and my PI, which is the, the boss, comes in like all breathless and excited to tell us about this woman who was, who had dropped out of Stanford, started her own tech company, and like wasn't that exciting. And he goes, she is just brilliant. She came up with this concept that you can run a lab test with just a single drop of blood. And he then proceeded to launch into this um, like motivational speech about women in science and medicine and that you know we should aspire to this level in our careers and that women in medicine are capable women in science and medicine are capable of so much greatness and i remember sitting there thinking to myself like wait a minute how is that even possible that you could run all of these lab tests on a single drop of blood like it's not it's not logical because there is a critical threshold volume that you need in order for these blood tests to detect things like there's a sensitivity where if you get too little volume you're not going to capture the adequate window of the blood of blood it's just it didn't make sense to me at the time and i remember like trying to butt in because he was like lecturing to us about you know like we needed to no matter how tough things got as women in science like we needed to just persevere because we need there needs to be more women in science and you know this woman she she was fearless and all of these things um and i can remember at the time just sitting there like tuning them out a bit and thinking to myself like wait a minute this does not make sense and i remember bringing that up and I think his response was something like to the effect of like, I just, you know, didn't dream big enough or something along those lines. Um, so I went back to, you know, making my Western blot or whatever um, and being like, uh, whatever. <laughs> I'm going to find out she's a complete fraud. So it hits, that story just really hits me on a personal level. So I'm really enjoying the show is what I'm getting at. And Amanda Seyfried is doing 
a really good job. But I had no idea that Elizabeth Holmes, I didn't realize this, that she um, is from Houston. Uh, she went to school here. She went to St. St. Thomas Episcopal High School, which is a really big high school here. And, I mean, like, watching the show, it looks like her family, I don't know, it kind of looks like maybe the Woodlands area. Let me know if you knew this gal, because I imagine some of you guys went to that high school. Did you, did you know her? It's so interesting, too, how she was able to just convince people who allegedly, you know, were scientifically minded critical thinkers and they just went along with this and so like seeing this story play out and everything you as you're watching it you know as, as people are watching it they're probably thinking a similar thing like why did nobody question this why did nobody look into it but honestly thinking back to when she was like getting hyped up and everything and how my PI at the time the the head of the lab came in equal like with this equal enthusiasm uh, like, I guess it was believable. I don't know. I didn't, I doubted it. And I felt dumb for doubting it. And now I, it's just, so that I'm, I'm like, you know, really captivated by the store. Um, anyway, I'm here at Home Goods because it's the first month of the year. Everybody's talking about organizing. I've been doing some decluttering. I already took my Christmas decorations down and put those away, which is always just kind of a sad thing because it's, it's, it's not sad. It's, it's freeing, but at the same time, it leaves you like kind of empty and then you're like, okay, well, I need to organize some things. So I'm here in Home Goods to see if they have um, some closet organizing things. I need to kind of get my closet uh, away from disaster zone. Although it's not, it's not completely chaotic, but there's just like some little facets of it that I really need some tidying up. They do have some organizing stuff. This looks more like for little bits and bobs. Nothing that I actually need at the moment, but that's cute. Cool. It's like bins in a cage. I like this because I need something to store blankets in in the living room. I like that it has a surface, but it looks a little I don't know, not like the best quality. Ooh, I like this throw pillow. The little pom-poms. I'm here in Walgreens and I'm excited to see that the facial cleanser that I've been using for months and months and months now by Avino is also in one of their uh, refills. So I don't need to buy another plastic bottle when I replace it after I finish it. This is really good, by the way, the face cream. It doesn't have hyaluronic acid or niacinamide if your skin is irritated by either of those ingredients. It's very basic. It's got oat in it, which is anti-inflammatory, moisturizing, and a skin protectant. It's really good. I, I rather enjoyed that. There's Albaline down there. Is it just me, the new Albaline skincare products? I have only seen them on Amazon. Are, are they like an Amazon exclusive? The ones I reviewed for you guys a while ago, the micellar cleansing milk, I actually really like. Um, I got a question the other day of how, what's a good way to remove sunscreen if you don't have access to water? That, that is a great product. Because you don't actually have to rinse it off the skin. I mean, I recommend doing that, but yeah, that's a great option. It's effective. For those of you who uh, like the CeraVe SA creams, a uh, great option for rough and bumpy skin. Although, uh, if you have KP, technically alpha hydroxy acids on paper are better, but some people just find that salicylic acid helps their KP more so than alpha hydroxy acid. And if that's the case, uh, looks like Walgreens has a generic version of the CeraVe SA cream and the SA lotion. $33.99 for 16 ounces, so $2.12 an ounce versus the Walgreens is $1.42 an ounce. Of course, there are some sales going on. Well, hey guys, I just hopped out of the shower and I wanted to share with you guys an update from one of the Korean advent calendars, this black rice facial oil by Haru Haru. I don't if you're new here, I don't use facial oils. I just find that oils by themselves, they don't really lock in moisture. So I'm like, what am I gonna do with that? But I don't know, a few years ago, I got this idea and it works quite well. To use these facial oils, anytime you have peeling skin 
anytime you have peeling flaky skin, just get a tiny drop. I mean, you don't need a ton and you don't even need like a fancy oil or anything, just an inexpensive facial oil. Just get a tiny little drop and massage it anywhere where you have flakes. What that's gonna do is it's going to soften and smooth those cornea sites that are trying to peel up. <clears throat> and it'll also kind of help slip in between things and allow them to shed on their own accord without disrupting the skin barrier. And provided you don't use a big glob of oil all over your face, you can put moisturizer on over it, it's fine. Uh, it works really well, but where I find that it also works really well is if you have peely, flaky lips, like chapped lips, a little bit of an oil works well. And I've been using this black rice facial oil. The only ingredient is rice bran oil, I believe. And you'll frequently find rice bran oil in a lot of moisturizers. And that's been fine. I feel as though it does have a bit of an aroma to it. And I don't know if that's just endogenous to a rice bran. I guess so. Um, I've been liking it. Uh, it's nice. I like this size uh, bottle too, because like I said, you don't need a ton. A lot of beauty brands, skincare brands, they come out with an oil, like a facial oil or whatever. It's a huge bottle. It's like, how much face do we have? Not enough for that. Um, anyway, like I said, I don't use facial oils, but the reason I also like this little soften and smooth approach is after that, just come on over to the lips with your petrolatum ointment. Um, I've been using this elastoplast wound healing ointment because I was influenced by someone on Instagram who got it and I was like, oh, a petrolatum ointment, don't mind if I do. Um, those of you who live in Australia, I believe you can get this there. It's nice. I prefer my CeraVe healing ointment, but this is actually just a really good basic, no nonsense uh, petrolatum ointment. It's got uh, white petrolatum, paraffin oil, uh, saracen wax, glycerin, panthenol. It's really nice, actually. It's really nice. So I've been using that ever since I finished up my CeraVe healing ointment. I've been using that like on my lip. I've been using this like on my lips and stuff. It, it doesn't matter. Petrolatum ointment, you could use plain Vaseline. You could use Aquaphor if you like that. Just make sure you're not you know, allergic to lanolin. Put it on over. It's really helpful for our chap lips. I find though that some people, they, for whatever reason, you know, plain Vaseline, it's just not, it just doesn't do it for them in any way, shape or form. Like they find that their lips are not moisturized by doing that. It's like they, their skin, their stratum corneum seems to defy logic on paper, but everyone is different. So just because that's what the research shows and that's what clinical experience tells us to do. You know, there could be some things that you just get along with better in your skincare routine. And as long as they're not bothering you, go for it. Like maybe you're somebody who prefers, I don't know, a shea butter lip balm. It works better for you. That's a great ingredient for dry lips. Use that. I mean, it may not compete head to head in laboratory studies and clinical studies with reducing trans epidermal water loss. But if it works for you and you find that it's more effective, keep on keeping on, you know? We don't know everything. I have to say, if you don't find Vaseline works for you, there's nothing wrong with you. Pick something that does work for you. Um, shea butter, like I said, it's great. What else is a good moisturizer? I'm speaking of moisturizer, I'm putting on this to my hands because I did just come out of the shower. I don't know. I, I like using this. Um, I'm a bit hooked on it. This Cavalon 3M barrier thing. Um, oh, doing these still. I'm telling you, I make use of the stuff that I get in those calendars for sure. You can get these on iHerb, FYI. I saw iHerb carry this. So to my face, when I got out of the shower, I just put on the Maylove Fade Away Brightening Serum. And I also put on a little bit of this Pion Kung Yule Intensive Repair Cream. I really like this. Now I'm gonna come in with my Tretinoin. Oh man. So if you live in the Northeast, especially, or the Midwest, somewhere cold, not Texas. Right now it's not cold in Texas. We got a little bit of cold for a bit there, but not right now. Um, this is a time of year you gotta watch out for windburn, right? Uh, especially if you commute on foot or by bicicleta, then yeah, you gotta watch out for that. So my main tips for preventing windburn are physical means, like a scarf, you know, those face, those UV face shields actually, that might actually be a helpful thing to prevent windburn actually, now that I think of it. 
physical means because the wind the cold dry wind it really sucks the moisture out of your skin and can leave it very raw and chapped um, and employ a barrier cream to the face now sunscreens especially the water resistant ones they actually can kind of dual as a skin protectant um, this one from amino the common restore skin therapy balm this works well on the face actually i use it as a hand cream you could also do the la roche posay cicaplast balm a diaper rash cream is another option. Let me know in the comments if you live somewhere that is not frighteningly cold. Anyway, y'all, I'm going to wrap this video up here. I hope you guys enjoyed it and enjoyed coming along with me for the vlog. And if you guys enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.